For the, for the, for the.
Senator Pia, can you hear us now? Hearing is resumed. Senator Cayetano? Yes, can I can hear, hear you. I can hear yes. you clearly. Thank you. Yes, uh, Senator Cayetano, I, I was uh, I was asking uh, Your Honor a few minutes ago if you would want to proceed now with Senate Bill 65 and if your resource persons coming from other time zones are now ready. Uh, otherwise, we, we might uh, proceed with uh, Senate Bills 203 and 1174. What's the pleasure of the uh, good senator from Taguig and Pateros? Um, Mr. Chair, um, some of our local resource persons are already here, but the the foreign resource person isn't here yet. I think I think he was advised that we will start uh, a little bit later. So for so long as we can accommodate him, um, you know, within our time frame, I, 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 you, you may proceed with your other resource persons, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, Senator Cayetano. We recognize likewise the presence of Senator De La Rosa and uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, good morning, sirs. Uh, Senate, we'll, we'll now be proceeding with Senate Bill 203, an act providing for a National Housing Development Production Financing Program, as well as Senate Bill 1774, uh, an act establishing a National Comprehensive Housing Finance Program. So we're, we're, we're happy to note that Senator, one of the authors is here, Senator Bongo. Uh, do you have an opening statement, sir? Senator Go. There's also a problem with uh, connectivity. Uh, Senator Go, can you hear us? Well, I, I, I also recognize the presence of uh, Secretary Carl Chua. Uh, Senate, Senate Bill, Senate Bill 203 and 1774 is, uh, are bills that probably would answer the President's call during the last uh, State of the Nation address to have a, a comprehensive housing finance program uh, for the country. And we're, we're, we're tackling this measure as a SONA uh, response to the President's uh, directive, although the bill filed by Senator Goh, and he will explain later, was filed uh, even prior to the, the SONA message of uh, President uh, Duterte, while Senate Bill 65 would deal with uh, sustainable cities, these are all intertwined together. These are all linked, Senate Bill 65 and the, fin the financing uh, acts filed by this representation and Senator Bongo. Uh, and let me read my opening statement. Since the Philippines is among the countries uh, to adopt the UN Sustainable Development Agenda in 2015, and we have a commitment, but uh, it appears that our commitment probably would not be met. Senator Go is there. Uh, in deference to Senator Go, the principal author. Senator Bongo, you have an opening uh, statement relative to Senate Bill 203. You have the floor, sir. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues, uh, good day to all of you. would like to thank uh, the good chairman for hearing one of my uh, priority bills, uh, Senate Bill uh, number 203, otherwise known as an act providing for national housing uh, development, production, and uh, financing program, regularizing its appropriation for its implementation, and uh, heeding the call of uh, President uh, Rodrigo Duterte to establish a national comprehensive housing financing program during his SONA. I also laud uh, my colleague, Senator uh, Pia Caetano, for filing Senate Bill Number 65, which uh, mandates uh, cities and communities to transition into sustainable cities and uh, communities. Let me reiterate that uh, the need for proper and adequate housing has been uh, a perennial prob problem plaguing the country since time immemorial. Mr. Chair, I have witnessed firsthand the situation of our fellow countrymen uh, sa pag-iikot at pagbibigay tulong sa mga nasunugan at dahil sa pandemic, nadagdagan pa sila ng bagong kalbaryo 
Nakakaawa po sila, bigyan po natin sila ng pagkakataong makamit ang kanilang pangarap na magkaroon ng sariling pamamahay. The housing need of the country continues to grow to more than 6.57 million units for the period of 2017 to, to 2022. The Philippine Statistical Research and Training Institute projected that the country's uh, Housing need will further grow to 22.6 million units by the end of uh, 2040. The population of informal settler families in the country has also continued to increase with 1.9 million ISF as of uh, 2019. In order to finally address this concern, it is necessary for the Philippine government to construct 1,130,000 and 575 uh, housing. Let me repeat, 1,130,575 housing units per year to eliminate the projected backlog. The annual housing production for the past 31 years was only at 128,407 units or barely 10% of the actual need. Limited appropriations have hampered the government's ability to provide millions of Filipinos with their best basic right of sh shelter. Less than 1% of the annual budget was put towards poor uh, housing programs, a large-scale uh, program which can cut through the bureau bureaucratic red tape and uh, consolidate adequate resources is needed to implement the major components of the national housing and production housing uh, program. It is for this reason which I am uh, pushing for the National Housing Development Production and Financing Bill. Mr. Chair, I have also filed Senate Bill uh, 1227 or the Rental Housing Subsidy Program Act also pending with this uh, committee. The bill also seeks to provide uh, homes uh, for displaced families and help them sustain their livelihoods by offering them uh, various uh, options during the interim process of construction and uh, relocation. Uh, kailangan, kailangan po natin matupad ang ating hangarin na walang, wala po sanang maging squatter sa sariling bayan. Gusto po natin magkaroon ng bawat Pilipino ng isang maayos at disenteng uh, pamamahay. I commend the good chairman of this committee for tackling this uh, vital measures to alleviate our poverty streak and uh, countrymen amidst uh, the pandemic. Uh, salamat, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, Senator Pia, do you have an opening statement relative to uh, the bills on, on financing, as well as uh, your bill, which will also touch uh, base with the, the, the bill, bills filed by uh, Senator Go and this representation? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, this is actually the second hearing uh, on second, no, second or third hearing that you've called for sustainable cities and communications, and I thank you for including it in the agenda today. Um, and I do appreciate that it's being heard with the other relevant bills because um, although I won't really go into the details on sustainable cities and communities, as I said, this is a continuing hearing, and we just have more resource person who will support it. I think more important is to make a statement that I support the other bills in the sense that I'd like us to be able to um, look at all the developments and investments we are making in the housing sector in a sustainable manner. So if I may make my appeal to the chair, but I believe the chair is also on board on this because you made uh, the chair made a statement to that effect that um, they all go together, that any support that we will be giving for the sector, uh, whether they be private sector in their uh, desire to contribute to the housing needs and even government projects should all be done in a sustainable manner. Um, for so long as um, we are um, all on board on that, I have full support for these measures. I just feel like it would be a step in the wrong direction if we will end up financing substandard projects uh, or projects that lack vision when it comes to sustainability. So I won't lecture about the importance of the sustainable development goals, but I hope that in the process of these hearings, it becomes very clear and that our resource persons would um, include it in, in any um, uh, statements that, that they are going to make because that is really what I will insist on. And again, um, my gratitude for the chair for 
including this bill in this hearing so that we can really have a cohesive and um, uh, integrated approach in the development of our housing sector. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Cayetano. Senator uh, uh, De La Rosa, do you have an opening statement? Uh, more, more, more especially because uh, you're concerned with the uh, uh, housing programs in the South? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh Wala akong opening statement. Uh, I will just uh, uh, butt in uh, later. Thank you, Senator De La Rosa. So for, for administrative uh, purposes, we will tackle, as I've said, we will tackle first Senate Bill 203 and 1774 jointly. Later on, as the resource persons coming from overseas are in, we'll be tackling Senate Bill uh, 65. But that doesn't prevent uh, Senator Cayetano, the sponsor of Senate Bill 65, from uh, interjecting because these are really uh, integrated. And for purposes of uh, uh, organizationally, we can excuse later on uh, Secretaries uh, Chua and uh, Del Rosario after, after they've clarified some uh, questions that will be emanating from this chair and perhaps from my other uh, colleagues. So we, we go on with Senate Bills 6203 and 1774 is has something to do with finance and i i i really i really feel that uh this is this will go beyond bayanihan 2 bayanihan 3 bayanihan 4 bayanihan 5 and and beyond because uh, this is really a big problem as uh, mentioned by senator go the number of uh, informal settlers really balloon uh we're now talking of a figure of uh, a baseline figure of 1,037,865 families. And this is nationwide. And, and my, my records would probably be, be bigger now, uh, especially with this pandemic, no constructions, uh, no livelihood. So I, I, refer to the, I refer to the statement mentioned a few a few weeks ago by a United Nations uh, rapporteur that uh, housing housing and I quote housing has become the frontline defense against coronavirus homes a home rarely, rarely been more of a life or death situation unquote pag sinabi po natin lockdown pag sinabi po natin stay at home Bahay po yung pinag-uusapan. Pag sinabi po natin quarantine, bahay po yung pinag-uusapan. That's why uh, Ms. Farna uh, of the United Nations uh, mentioned that we really have to respond globally to this pandemic on a housing sector focus initiative. So many countries have adopted specific measures to protect homeowners, mortgage holders, it's like... Uh, what Senator Go said, uh, he even filed another bill relative to uh, rentals and mortgages. So evictions, extension of rental contracts, deferral of rental payments, these are really the buzzwords uh, for this pandemic. So this, this hearing will tackle all of this, including perceived gaps, matagal na po ito, perceived gaps in the housing law, as well as the execution of the, the newly uh, created, issued, Law. Um, may I, I hope you have read the two bills that uh, I'm addressing the resource persons here. Uh, the two measures, 204 and 1774, uh, especially those coming from the uh, housing finance sector. Uh, I hope you have a copy. So, but I assure you, this will not be the first uh, time that we'll be having a hearing relative to this. This will be. Uh, we'll probably have a third or fourth hearing because this is a. So now priority of the president. May, may we ask the statements coming from our two cabinet members? We'll start first with Secretary Del Rosario. Thereafter, uh, I'll be calling Secretary uh, Carl Chua because this is, I, I've heard a lot of uh, news that our uh, SGD goals 2030 will not, will not be achieved because of the coronavirus uh, situation. And we're now projecting the ambition in 2040. So, Secretary Del Rosario, uh, you have the floor. Secretary Del Rosario, are you still there? 
hello? Yes, we can hear you. Siguro you can remove your face mask kasi baka ikaw lang yan nandyan sa sa room para maintindihan namin. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairman uh, Francis Tolentino. Honorable Sa Senators, uh, key shelter agencies that invited to this hearing. Uh, we would like to give our insight as a source persons to the passage of the following bills. Senate Bill Number 203, Senate Bill Number 1774, and Senate Bill Number 65. The Department of Human Settlements and the Key Shelter Agencies would like to express our full support to the passage of the aforementioned bills. On Senate Bills 203 and 1774, we would like to state that food, clothing, and shelter are the basic needs of man. Among the contributing factors to the growing housing problem is the increasing population, the past tempo of organization, adverse impact of climate change, and limited annual appropriation for the housing sector. In 2016, the housing sector was allocated 1.111% of the national budget, 0.45% in 2018, 0.07% in 2019, and 0.44% in 2020. The Senate Bills number 203 and 1774 are very timely and urgent, the passage of which would close the housing gap by appropriating funds for the housing sector through the General Appropriations Act that will address the housing needs of the country, which is estimated to be at 6.57 million by 2022 and 22.61 million by 2040 if nothing is done in order to address this. The passage of the bills would not only fast track the implementation of various government projects, but also help us plan ahead of time for future developments. As provided in Senate Bill Number 203, that all government agencies shall submit an inventory of informal settled families to be affected by their projects and their location two years ahead prior to its implementation. Likewise, the Department supports the proposed amendment to Section 43 of Republic Act 7279 on socialized housing tax to include the proceeds from the imposition of socialized housing tax shall accrue to the special funds of the LGUs, which shall be used for the development of socialized housing projects and construction, estate management of public rental housing of the LGUs. This provision will ensure source of funds for the implementation of socialized housing projects by the local government units. Senate Bill 203 proposed an annual appropriation of 135 billion with a total of 2.75 billion for a 20 year period. Whereas Senate Bill 1774 proposed an annual appropriation of 50 billion with a total of 1 trillion for a 20 year period. If SB 774 will be considered, we would be able to solve our country's housing need to the barest minimum in 20 years. And of course, if SB 203, breaching the housing gap may be realized in less than 10 years. But that this must be balanced with our country's budget situation and the absorptive capacity of the implementing agencies. On Senate Bill number 65, we believe that it will provide further impetus to the issue as to provide guidance to our cities and municipalities in crafting their respective land use and development plans. The preparation of the CLUP involves the planning of the entire jurisdiction of a local government unit from ridge to rip. The CLUP is a physical plan where an intensive study and analysis of an LGU's physical conditions and resources is conducted to determine and allocate suitable areas for specific urban development to address the needs and demands of our cities and its population in terms of social, economic, and infrastructure development. And integrated in the preparation of CLUP is the climate change and disaster risk reduction. 
on climate and risk, this should is strengthening the resilience of our cities and municipalities through integrating climate and disaster risk assessment in the preparation of local shelter plans, urban expansion planning, and land development controls. The department is confident that the land use planning process we carry out in partnership with numerous national government agencies, vital stakeholders, and local government units have substantially incorporated objectives of the development frameworks of sustainable development, uh, SDG number 11, sustainable cities and communities, and SDG numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9, and 13. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Secretary thank you. Del Rosario. Unless uh, some of my colleagues like to propound some questions. I'd, I'd like to recognize the presence of Senator Aimee Marcos. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Senator Cayetano is recognized. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. I'm, I'm happy to see you again uh, today. Um, I recall that you were very supportive of uh, my bill also on sustainable cities uh, in the last hearing. And, but I'd just like to, you know, have your response um, spread into the records that, um, in the assuming that uh, funding will be available, because we, we strongly support that, I don't think anyone in the Senate will uh, deny that the need for housing, funding for housing is uh, critical. But can you give us our assurance that you will be, um, you will you will employ um, creative thinkers, you know, uh, new ideas in reinventing our cities and our houses, because um, no less than an uh, internationally known organization, whether it's WHO, United Nations, um, experts locally and uh, internationally would say that we really have to redefine the way we live. And it starts with the home, no? as, as uh, our chair mentioned. So may I just have you respond to that? Are you prepared to make those changes? Because what I don't want to happen is the of budget deliberation or if there will be an oversight committee and then the designs are still the same, you know, and then I, I will point it out and say, oh, but walang nagbago dyan. Um, before I ask you to respond, um, in the last hearing, I believe I expressed um, what, again, is is a common sentiment, not sentiment, but expert opinions, um, that we have to redefine these cities and these homes because um, the importance of health has been, has been revealed to all of us. So if you don't create these cities that become more walkable, Walang paglalakara, no? Tapos yung mga tao nakakulong lang sa napakaliit nilang... I mean, we may not have that much flexibility in giving them bigger homes. I wish that was that were an option and to the extent na pwede, let's do that. But yung mga malalaking common space, corridors na malalapad, um, reinventing what's walkable. I mean, I come from Taguig City, so, so alam ko na very... Um, uh, mahirap maghanap ng open space. Pero you can recreate that eh, by way of designing... The structures in that way um, and even making it um, uh, sustainable in terms of yung pag paggawa nyo ng fasad ng mga building and nakakabita ng mga halaman so makakakain sila doon. Are you prepared to invest in this way? To talk to experts, young people, fresh graduates who can give us fresh ideas in the event of the cities? Honorable uh, Chairman, Your Honors, uh, yes ma'am, uh, uh, actually this is incorporated in the crafting of the uh, comprehensive land use plan. Uh, this is a multi-sectoral uh, platform wherein the output uh, is basically uh, on uh, risk analysis. Uh, once the uh, CLUP is uh, crafted by the LGU, it will be followed by another plan, which we call the local shelter plan. So we will be able to identify the lands available for uh, housing in any city or urban areas, municipalities. And uh, from here, uh, the design, uh, we will incorporate uh, uh, in the design the, uh, the latest in technology so that there is uh, involved as well as in the identification of location, the construction itself, and spatial uh, distance will be met because it is... Uh, uh, mandated uh, per our uh, laws so that uh, it will be a community that the usual uh, uh, construction without uh, uh, open spaces that would uh, provide a better uh, community 
uh, as if we are building uh, big subdivisions in a township. Sige. Um, what I'd also like to emphasize, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Secretary, is that um, they, you may be compliant with existing laws, but these laws that we have right now uh, are not responsive to this pandemic that we have experienced, and neither are they responsive to the sustainable development goals of which we are signatories to. So I just like to point that out. No, baka lumapit sa inyo mga engineers nyo sa bien eto hu yung mga requirement pasok na hutayo. Pero walang ayon. Hindi pa nakasulat lahat yan sa mga batas natin. And that's precisely why we're hearing this bill on sustainable development goals. But this bill, I also drafted this. I personally wrote it, crafted it. Um, before the pandemic started. So even I have learnings which I would like to incorporate in the final version of this bill. And um, just to, before I end, what I'd like to emphasize also is that a lot of learnings that I believe, um, I'm sure you've attended the meetings of IATF. Uh, well, I don't know, but have you attended the meetings of IATF with the uh, Metro Manila mayors? Have you had the opportunity to join any of those meetings? No. I have not either, but I, I do have a brother who's a mayor, so I know that they meet once to twice a week, no? And at some point, um, it might be good if you meet with them because they would have a lot of learnings. And one of the things I gathered from them, which is very consistent with my readings and talking to experts in my own committee on SDGs, is that um, there's a move to really develop our communities and cities in a sustainable way. And I don't mean it... In, in a sustainable and self-sufficient way. That's what I mean, self-sufficient, meaning to say within a particular radius, and I don't know what that radius is, whether it's one kilometer or two kilometers, halos lahat ng pangangailangan ng community, they can get it there. And this is a um, learning because of the lockdown. So like now, the move now is that we will not uh, hanggat kaya, if it can be avoided that there would be this region-wide lockdowns, there would now just be um, localized lockdowns. So how would you do that? It would be very difficult for the residents na ang karamihan ng resources na kailangan nila are outside of the community. And thus, the um, idea that it can be as self-sufficient as possible. So yung water supply nila, nandyan, yung schools ng mga bata. I mean, the next calamity we have may not have to do with a health calamity. You might be able to go to school, but um, it's something else that you are prevented from doing. No, so it has to be walkable for everybody. Uh, the um, the uh, uh, easy access to to the resources that they need should be something that they're not dependent on uh, a supply that comes six hours away, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I would suggest, um, Mr. Well, Mr. Chair, I'm assuming that you have the representatives. I, I know we do have representatives, pala from local government. I know we have, but Perhaps yeah, in your own, yes, but in your own um, uh, technical working groups or in the rules that you will be implementing in the future, Secretary, involve them talaga. Kasi I, I, I can only, I only have a glimpse of the knowledge that these people on the ground have, the mayors, the barangay captains, because of the day-to-day -day experience that they've had the last few months. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Senator Cayetano. Uh, before we... Is there any other question that could be addressed to uh, Senator, uh, Secretary De Lusario coming from Senator Aimee or Senator Bato? Then perhaps we can uh, proceed to NEDA. NEDA, uh, before you make your presentation, uh, take into consideration the following. Uh, last year, September to be exact, the UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez stated that SDG goals will have to be reset. Now, because of COVID-19, I think that statement will continue to reverberate uh, positively in so far as its impact on poverty is concerned. Mas marami pong mahirap ngayon, uh, Secretary. Kaya siguro yung, yung presentation mo should include an actual picture as to the, the exact number of people below the poverty threshold. Ilan ba tayo? 20, 71 million? Uh, extreme poverty? Uh, look at your uh, uh, figures. And then I'd like you to answer, because Senator Cayetano alluded to Metro Manila mayors, I'd like you to answer an item which, I, I, which came to my attention just today, 
I used to be the Metro Manila chairman before and NHA is familiar with this. Napakarami nating proposed on-site resettlement sa Pasig River uh, area and I, I, I came across with a an article that there is going to be a Pasig River Highway, a uh, 19 point something kilometer stretch that would be a game changer in so far as the traffic condition in Metro Manila, but also would affect the settlers uh, and, and, and automatically clear the uh, area and the surrounding esteros of uh, informal settlers. So uh, that's probably that should probably be part of your perhaps presentation. And then going forward, I, I would like to hear later on, and, and this is to give a heads up to NHA, NHA's record in so far as the in ISF's uh, figure is concerned is 3,753,537, while the should figure, uh, our figures here, NHA, I'm sorry, NHA's figure is 1,037,865, ISFs, which I mentioned a while ago, but this should figure as of last year is 3,753,537. So, magkaiba yung datos ninyong dalawa, NHA, uh, NHA and this should, although you, you belong to just one uh, department. So, Secretary Chua, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon to you and the senators and to the other resource persons. Uh, I would like to propose that I first uh, give a general statement. Uh, in particular, we were invited to give a presentation on the impact of COVID-19 on the SDG 11 target. Uh, after my general statement, I would request uh, Under Secretary Rose Edilion, after me or at the appropriate time, to give the details of our presentation. And as to the two bills that uh, were mentioned by the chair, uh, we were actually not uh, invited to comment on that, but uh, we will uh, look at it and send you our comments within the week. Uh, if I may start, Mr. Chair, because you mentioned ahead, the ahead. Um, uh, Clearly, uh, many countries uh, are now, uh, their progress on the SDGs are severely affected by COVID, which is uh, something that uh, eight months ago uh, is not in the radar of uh, any country or development planner. So clearly, uh, we will have to revisit our progress on that. But let me just highlight uh, one important fact that uh, we have seen between 2015 and 2018, and that is the significant drop in our poverty rate from 23.5% of the population. At that time, it was around 100 million. It uh, declined to 16.7% of the population in 2018. Uh, what that means is uh, we have lifted 6 million Filipinos out of the poverty rate uh, of around 70 pesos per person per day. That was the target. The 6 million is our target by 2022. But we have achieved that four years in advance and saw that in 2018. And the 2022 target of 14% uh, is likely to be reached. Uh, that was prior to COVID. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we will have to revisit all these numbers. But one thing I wanted to highlight is we entered this crisis on a very strong economic, fiscal, and social footing. Not only did our poverty rate uh, significantly decline, uh, we also saw the lowest uh, record of unemployment and underemployment in our history. So I think despite the... Uh, uh, problems that we are facing with COVID, our uh, strong foundation and beginning track record will actually help us uh, get back on track uh, the soonest uh, possible time. The second point I wanted to make, uh, Mr. Chair, is uh, this pandemic is going to highlight the inequality. As we enter, uh, as we progress from a uh, low middle income to upper middle income country, not only are we interested in the total number of poor people, we are also interested in the uh, level of equality of our country. And that is actually what we are aspiring for in our long-term vision, the ambition in 2040, where no one is poor and there are economic opportunities for everyone. And rightly so, I think one of the key uh, foundational or environmental uh, contribution 
to aspiring this uh, vision is uh, uh, housing, uh, livable communities. And so we actually very much support the direction that the committee and uh, Senator Pia's bill are uh, proposing. Uh, in the NEDA part, we are the vice chair of the uh, Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa program. A big part of the housing and livable community uh, agenda really is to have a more balanced regional development so that we can provide better opportunities uh, where the people choose to be where they want to be, whether in the major cities or in the secondary cities or in the provinces, and have the opportunity serve them. And one of the key uh, aspects of the Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa is really uh, adequate housing, including water and sanitation. These have been uh, a long-time problem for us, and COVID is going to uh, highlight the disparity among those who have housing, uh, sustainable and livable uh, shelter, and those without. And I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to move faster to deliver. The other thing that uh, NEDA is uh, proposing and is one of the SONA priorities is the National Land Use Act. And this is how I think we can have a better way to plan how we use scarce resources among the competing uh, objectives of housing, of agriculture, of industry, and so on. So in general, uh, this is the uh, direction that NEDA is taking and we support and we look forward to commenting uh, on the details of the bill. Uh, at this point, Mr. Chair, let me get back to you on the second question on the Pasig River Highway. I, I will just make a quick check. Uh, if you will allow uh, Under Secretary Rose to make a detailed presentation, or maybe uh, later is also okay when the uh, Senate Bill 65 is being tackled. Thank you very much. Secretary, I also had another question. Uh, it, it has something to do with poverty. Uh, what is the effect of COVID-19 in so far as the uh, poverty figures of the country is concerned at uh, mas madami pang uh, naghirap you mentioned also a while ago that uh, there are initiatives for decentralization but can you consider covid-19 as as an impetus of reverse urban migration uh, are, are people really going back to the provinces because of the pandemic or are we are we pushing them back because of our existing programs uh, for instance the balik Provincia program. So you, you have to put factor all of this in your calcula calculation uh, in so far as the economic uh, condition of the country is concerned go going forward. So you answer my, my first question. Mas marami ba naghihirap ngayong COVID-19? O pareho pa rin? Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me answer it in this uh, manner. Uh, there are two types of poverty, urban poverty and rural poverty. I think uh, the urban poor will be affected uh, because uh, a lot of the uh, urban poor, uh, their jobs and sources of livelihoods have been uh, uh, hindered by the COVID and our community quarantine. And that is why our response to provide emergency subsidy through Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2, as well as the small business wage subsidy, are actually our ways of helping them cope so that they will not fall into deeper poverty. On the other hand, the far majority of the poor are in rural areas, in agriculture. These are actually the sectors that hardly are affected uh, directly by COVID. We continue to see positive growth in agriculture production. Our food supply is uh, very uh, good. Uh, prices are low. So in, in, a, in a way, uh, the way we have to look at the effect of COVID on poverty would be more nuanced than that. I think the urban poor are affected uh, uh, more. Uh, the rural poor are less affected or possibly uh, still uh, holding up. Now, on the uh, next question, um, I think uh, overall uh, there will be uh, temporary movements of people from congested urban areas to uh, safer uh, areas in the province where there is no congestion. And congestion really is one of the biggest source of the COVID spread. However, in the medium to long term, it really depends on where the economic opportunities are. And that is why in the Balik Provincia, where uh, NEDA is vice chair, we have proposed a framework wherein we uh, 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 move towards a more balanced regional development so that uh, 
more people will have the option to stay where they want to be in the provinces if they want uh, without having to be forced to go into the cities and live in uh, areas or uh, housing that are below standards. So that is our um, main objective, to provide uh, more balance opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. But I'm, I'm trying to uh, digest your previous two statements that there are more more uh, urban poor families than rural poor. Uh, and, and having said, had said that, logically, will it follow that uh, if you transfer either through forced migration or the reverse migration I mentioned a while ago because of COVID-19, those coming from the urban poor sector, the ISFs uh, in Metro Manila, back to the provinces, will they still be considered as poor uh, sans the nomenclature urban, uh, rural, in terms of their geographical presence? Will they be still uh, below the poverty threshold? Or nawala na sila? So I, I think semantics will have to, to, to uh, be clarified. Uh, is it your presence in an urban area that makes you poor? Or when you transfer to a rural area, you're no longer poor? Uh, well, Mr. Chair, we do our survey every three years. Uh, that is the Family Income and Expenditure Survey. So that survey will uh, uh, record the characteristic of the person at that time of the survey, wherever they are, whether in urban or in rural. Uh, just to clarify, I think uh, the, the, our statistics show that uh, the far majority of the poor are in rural and agriculture. Uh, although there are many low-income families in urban areas, but officially are not considered poor because uh, to be poor, you have to be below a poverty threshold. Now, on the second point, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, there are differences in cost of living across the country. For instance, if we use the minimum wage, Metro Manila minimum wage is uh, almost twice as high as the lowest uh, minimum wage uh, in Northern Luzon or in Mindanao. So it really depends where the person is. The cost of living or prices will affect the amount of goods or service he can buy, but also the income level, the opportunity. So uh, the short answer, uh, Mr. Chair, is that um, this will have to depend at the time that we do the survey to account for the characteristic of the people. Uh, but uh, it is uh, driven also by the availability of jobs or income and the prevailing uh, price or cost of living in that area so that we can account for them properly. Thank you. One, 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 last, one last point before I, I let you go, Secretary uh, Chua. Uh, news reports coming from NEDA last Monday, the other day, uh, NEDA was quoted as saying, that you are revising the government's medium-term development goals under the Philippine uh, Development Plan due to the coronavirus uh, impact. Ano yung magiging impact nito sa housing uh, development blueprint? So, will there be a total revision? Otherwise, uh, hindi na makasimula itong dishud natin. Kaki-create lang nitong dishud. They're crafting a housing blu development blueprint. And uh, here you are now, because of the COVID-19 situation, you will be uh, revising the government's medium-term economic development blueprint to include, uh, quoting from your source, your your department sources, a new normal uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic economy, quote unquote. Uh, what what would be the effect on on the housing, on the housing sector, uh, Secretary Carl? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think there are two levels uh, on how we do our planning and target. The first is the overall economy or the macroeconomy. And uh, we will have to be uh, more realistic that because of the unexpected shock uh, called COVID and the quarantines that we have imposed to protect the lives of the people, uh, many of these will be adjusted to reflect the reality so that we are more objective about it. But on the second level are the sectoral targets. Uh, they do not actually have to change. Uh, the number of people in need of housing, and will, uh, in, 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 in this case, will uh, more people will be in need of housing and other social services are still there. So what we are actually doing in our updating of the Philippine Development Plan is to be actually more responsive to the emerging priority 
which is a more healthy and resilient uh, Philippines. Uh, if I may ask uh, your permission, Mr. Chair, to allow yeah, other secretaries to expound on this, if uh, you can. You so who, will, who will answer? Who will answer? Under Secretary Rose Edillon of NEDA. Under Secretary Rose Edillon. It's not because uh, you're evading the the, the question. It's not because you're you, you're being groomed to be the field health chairman or no. field health president. <laughs> Diana. So uh, under she's, Secretary. She's, yeah, she is. Chair, magaan lang ako pa na Sandali, magaan mute lang ako kasi kailangan ko lang tumawa. Nagbigyan niyo na ako na. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kawawa naman. Kawawa naman si. Si Carl Chua. Kawawa ang data. No intent to agree. But uh, Yusek Rose heads our uh, policy and planning group, so she's uh, more updated on the details. Uh, Yusek, Yusek, you're recognized. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, and uh, thank you, Sir Carl. Uh, sabi nga kayo, no, Sen Pia, kawawa naman ang NEDA, papalit-palit na lang kami. Anyway, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as mentioned by uh, by Sir Carl, right now we are updating the PDP. The first thing we did was really to change the uh, overall uh, goals that we, it's really now geared towards uh, healthy and resilient Philippines. Uh, with respect to the targets, the first thing that we are uh, mindful of is really making sure that uh, we have the resources uh, that are available in order to respond to the, the needs of the times. So that's why it's really important for us to, to um, make sure that we come up with the very realistic macroeconomic targets because this is actually what will, uh, what will also define uh, what will be the revenue projections. And then on that basis, uh, you all magiging um, uh, deficit uh, that that will be implied. So it's really important that uh, we go we get those things right. Now, with respect to the sectoral planning, actually we have sectoral planning committees. We have planning committees and we have planning uh, subcommittees. Yung shelter uh, agency, I'm sure this should is uh, is a member. Uh, is actually chapter twelve of the of the PDP. So. Pareho pa rin yung, ano, yung overall goal, which is uh, still in line with uh, with SDG 11, actually. No? Uh, pero um, tulad nga nang sabi niya, no, ni Sec. Carl, then there will be some, you know, some tweaking uh, because uh, we will need to take uh, cognizance of the fact that some that there will be some migration uh baka hindi, baka mag-iba yung, ano, yung uh, geographical distribution of, uh, of settlements. Mr. Chair, thank you. But but uh, you said th 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 there were reports uh, emanating likewise from NEDA that your your revision uh, would would entail an, an, an increase of eighty five percent in so far as the housing needs. Tama po ba to? My my question uh, is this really. Ganito yung question ko. We're supposed to have right now mm. the census period. Census dapat ngayon eh. Yeah, in September, I think, Mr. Chair. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, paano nyo ma-re-revise ma ma lahat itong figures natin? And, and the census is really very critical in so far as planning is concerned. Mm -hmm. Hindi tayo magkakasensus because of COVID. Maraming ma maraming maapektuhan sa atin. And any plans for, for NEDA to push through with the census? Hindi, hindi nami-miss itong census eh, ever since eh. Bata pa ako, dinidikitan na ng sticker yung gate namin. <laughs> so for purposes of planning, uh, for purposes of, na, na, uh, not just for, and it nakikinig si Mayor D. of Isabella, redistricting, for purposes of uh, health needs, census talaga. Any plans uh, concerned? In, we cannot have a virtual census. Yeah. And census talaga, house to house. house so to house. anybody from NEDA who can answer? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, Secretary Carl here. Uh, the census uh, of 2020 was moved from May because we were in, uh, to a large extent, under the ECQ. We are now starting the census in September. So this is on track uh, to begin in September. Uh, this is important uh, activity that uh, uh, even during the GCQ we will proceed. So long as uh, we will not have a worsening of the quarantine status, we can proceed in September. With the permission of Senator 
Marcos and Pia and Senator De La, De La Rosa, kung matutuloy yung census ngayon, September, uh, uh, ang, ang tanong ko dyan, have you touched base with the local government units? Have you engaged uh, uh, the other agencies like uh, the SWD? And thinking out loud, can't the census be linked with our contract contact tracing program? Kasi nag-house to house ka na rin eh, di ba? So isang gastusan na lang yan, yung nag-census, nag-contact tracing, naka, naka, nakakuha pa ng data for uh, planning purposes. Uh, have you, have you, have your creative juices uh, reached this point of a, uh, Uh, integrating these two programs to to uh, save on uh, costly uh, on costs, uh, Secretary Chua. Isahan trabaho na lang. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, on the uh, coordination with the LGU, that is actually happening already because the census is a lot of uh, work and the uh, LGUs uh, are really helping on that. On your second point, uh, the Philippine Statistics Act is uh, very clear. The 2013 Act is very clear of the confidentiality of the data at the individual level. So the purpose of all Philippine Statistics Authority uh, statistic is for general statistical purposes. So unfortunately, by law, we cannot uh, have a targeting at the individual level. That is why uh, the targeting is done separately under a different program called the Listahanan of the BSWD. So that is our uh, constraint because of what the law says. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my, my other colleagues, do you have any uh, questions addressed to NEDA? Mr. Senator, Chair. Yeah, Senator Cayetano, Chagnay. Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, my question for Secretary Carl uh, actually requires that I put on two hats at the same time, being chair of the Committee on Ways and Means, wherein I work very closely with the Secretary, uh, when he was USEC of um, uh, DOF, And also my uh, chairmanship of the Committee on SDG Innovation and Futures Thinking. Um, simply put, um, in terms of rationalizing of incentives, can I just hear uh, from the Secretary on um, how we can use this power that we intend to grant and strengthen with the FIRB to ensure that the developments in the housing sector and in the cities, no? because ako, when I say housing, honestly, For me, you, you do not build decent housing if it's not a community. You know? That is not decent housing. All the lessons we learned over the past decades, the news articles uh, that, that would uh, hug the headlines is that these uh, people who were um, uh, relocated there left and never want to, don't want to live there because uh, either substandard yung facilities that should be given within the house, within the house, so let's say water supply, basic laws. But even things like Uh, there are no accessible stores. There are no schools. So that's SDG, you know? that's a sustainable city. So may I know lang from the secretary if um, he can be assured or if there is any plan that he can put into place or if it is already there but just needs to be emphasized to ensure that any funding that will go into this, that the ENEDA will weigh heavily on uh, the need for this to proceed in a sustainable manner, that these elements are put into place so that we do not use... So that we use our um, limited funding in a in the most um, efficient way, and even for the private sector, that they would be guided accordingly. And if there are need, if there is a need to revise some laws, that maybe we can already incorporate it in some of the bills pending here. Um, specifically, there is mention in Section 11 of SB 203 about the uh, extension um, of the benefits under RA. 7279 uh, regarding incentives but i'd like uh Neda to weigh in on this no not to change it but to just clarify exactly what uh what we mean by sustainability um and uh what what changes if any need like i said no drastic changes but to ensure that uh, it is going in that direction as a chair okay. uh, thank you very much uh mr chair and senator p uh, Uh, to answer the question, uh, let me uh, explain it in three levels. So the first is, uh, as you know, uh, Senator Pia, uh, the CITIRA or the CREATE bill provides more targeted incentives to selected sectors by priority and even more incentives to those investing 
in a far away area. So I think the the first framework is really to have a more targeted way of providing incentives. And uh, and I understand housing is in one of those on, in the bill that you have. The second is uh, for the investment priority plan, which is uh, prepared by the BOI, to specifically put the conditions on how to avail of, for instance, incentives for settlements or housing. And one way to do it is not just, just to say how many units are being uh, produced. The IPP can actually put a condition on other uh, uh, criteria such as uh, uh, sustainability, uh, access to water, open areas, and so on. So uh, that is the second level. And the third level is the FIRB, uh, as proposed in your bill, as the approver, will ensure that uh, the incentives that are given are performance-based and time-bound so that when the developer promised to deliver a community or so-and-so housing, it must come also with the water, the green areas, and so on. And that will uh, warrant the provision of uh, incentives. And uh, But if uh, in the current situation, kasi, we have uh, one incentive for everyone, walang targeting, so whatever sector, whatever area, pare pareho, whether Manila or Mindanao. The second is uh, the IPP does not really put uh, into detail these conditions that we want them to implement. And second, uh, the third is we have no way to check on the performance. So I think the approach that the uh, Senator uh, P.S. Bill is uh, crafted, the Sitira and Create, actually addresses a lot of the concerns that uh, that you raise. Thank you. In other words, Mr. Chair, let me just um, uh, make a quick comment. In other words, parang front-loaded yung check and balances natin, no? You instead of instead of um, having that burden to keep on checking if uh, what are their compliances, you provide it in front. But if you want to avail, these are the standards. And so dun palang yes, yes. sa mo na. That's what you're saying, Secretary. Yes. Um, uh, in fact, uh, the model that we followed, uh, for instance, the Thai, Thailand's uh, investment priority plan has a lot of details. Mm -hmm. uh, not only on the physical target to invest the money, but also on the type of technology or the type of outputs that are envisioned. So that is something that we can front load so that it's very clear that when someone do invest and avail of any uh, uh, available incentive, uh, it is clear what they should be uh, performing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, uh, Senator Cayetano. Senator Marcos, any... Yes, you're recognized. Yes, Mr. Chair, no real questions. Just a request from NEDA, from Music Rose, and uh, from our new Secretary of NEDA, Carl. Hihingi lang ako ng tulong dun sa mga data na post-COVID sa poverty. Whenever you get them in, even if it's not a full-blown census, I'd be really grateful to uh, um, have a look at them. Uh, of course, we would like to see the usual um, markers of 60% rural poverty. Kung uurong ba yan post COVID, dahil nga talagang balooning numbers ang nakikita natin sa urban centers. At sa kabila nun, yung 40% ng Mindanao plus Cordillera, kung uh, andun pa rin siya, dahil relatively unscathed yung both areas na tinatawag natin poorest of the poor. So, pag may datos kayo, konting tulong lang. And isa pang hirip, um, Alam ni uh, Yusek Cruz, marami na kan wala na itong connection sa housing ha. Pasensya lang chair pero nandito yung mga bossing eh. Kaya kay Yusek Cruz, yung NEDA bill natin, yung NEDA charter, we've worked a lot on it but uh, sa akin okay naman siya. Uh, kaya lang may bagong uh, bossing sa NEDA. So I think it's important that Secretary Calchu has a look at it so that I can quickly report it out to the plenary. Konting tulong lang. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Uh, Yusek, Carl, padalan mo rin ako nung datos ng poverty incidence levels natin, lalong-lalo na yung post-census period. But still, uh, you're still trying to evade my question. I, I asked you a while ago about the Pasig River Highway because I, I, I would I would surmise that it will have an effect on uh, uh, ISF, especially those residing near our, our Esteros in the Pasig River area. What's the update on this? Uh, this, this, this is germane still, uh, my dear colleagues. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, actually, I just received some information from the staff, uh, but I will uh, send the details to you later. Um, there are... Uh, 
Yeah, there are actually, um, uh, according to the study uh, of the DPWH, because uh, Mr. Chair, NEDA is not the implementing agency. We are the evaluator. Uh, but so we but, but, uh, it will it will have to pass uh, master not the board. Yes, correct. Uh, correct. Yes. yes. Uh, but so I am uh, I'm uh, looking at the uh, studies that are being prepared by the DPWH as the implementing agency. So they they reported some thirteen thousand three hundred eighteen informal uh, settlers uh, along the Mangahan floodway. Uh, that may be implemented, that may be affected by the implementation of the uh, project. So I, I will uh, I will take another look at this and send you the details as you requested. Uh, but uh, as uh, as uh, to be expected in many infrastructure projects, uh, of course, uh, in areas where there are already people residing, we do a cost benefit analysis to determine what is the best way to deliver the infrastructure with the least. Uh, impact on those people that may be affected. So I, I will send the details to your office. Thank you, Secretary. From my uh, sources, this project would be completed within three years. So again, this is going to be a game changer in so far as mobility is concerned, but uh, we will have to be uh, looking at relocation, massive relocation for, for uh, uh, families that will have to be affected. Thank you, Secretary Chua. May, may we ask uh, NHA? Uh, I I posed a question a while ago. It, it appeared that uh, is, is uh, Junis Calada still there? Uh, it has something to do with the figures that I seem to be having a hard time reconciling. Your your figures of the total number of ISFs is more than uh, one million. These uh, figures would would amount to more than. 3,753,000. Uh, June, Mr. Escalada. And then your uh, reaction to the, to the, to the, to the bills uh, under consideration. But prior to that, bear in mind that we still perceive the issue, the continuing issue of production and finance in so far as uh, the housing sector. The, 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 the completion of houses uh, issue is concerned. So, hindi po ba nare-resolve ito na kung sino talaga yung sino talaga yung in charge uh, now that we have a, a issue that is uh, functioning? Uh, Administrator Galada, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And good afternoon, everyone, especially our members of the committee and our uh, secretaries in attendance. Uh, if I may speak about the 1.37 million as indicated by our reports to the committee. Uh, we stand by the number, Mr. Chair, the 1.3 uh, 1 million ISFs. Uh, based on our report, we validated this on the basis of the reports and submissions coming from the LGUs and verified by our RMs in 2017. In 2017. So if we would like to compare the figure of 1.3 uh, million as indicated in our report as against the total backlog of 5.6 million, Mr. Chair, which is a, a consolidation of all the participations between the formal and informal sector. I think rightfully, Mr. Chair, the 1.3 represents the 30%. So mathematically, Mr. Chair, the 30% share of NHA from the 5.6 million total backlog in 2016 is our figure that we are trying to assert. And this is this has been the basis of our proposals for budget allocation for 2020, 2021 and onwards, Mr. Chair. So we would like just to inform our secretary if and when we need to clarify on the disparity uh, that can be discussed later on. Because apparently if it is 3 million, Mr. Chair, that's already 50%. And that is very alarming. If the June, 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 siguro, uh, it would be better kung if you sit down with Secretary Del Rosario because my, my, my records here would show that uh, the Shoots Consolidated Local Shelter Plan data has a figure of 3,753,537. And I'm sure NEDA would, would, would be able to produce another figure. So, so for planning purposes, dapat siguro isa lang yung 
baseline figure natin. Uh, we're, we're not discounting a mathematical error here in computing, but we should just have one figure. NEDA, DISHUD, NHA, and other relevant government agencies, including perhaps uh, the ILG. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What I'm referring to, Mr. Chair, is the share of NHA. If and when the total backlog is 5.6 million, the share of NHA, Mr. Chair, and members of the committee over the past so many years is always 30%. So the 30% of 5.6 million, Mr. Chair, is more or less 1.3, 1.4. So uh, we, would, we will, uh, according to your proposal, Mr. Chair, we will coordinate the, the figure and consolidate as well uh, based on the existing figures proposed or identified by our department. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, if we proceed, I proceed to the second question that you've raised early on. Uh, pursuant, to the man pursuant to the mandate, Mr. Chair, as well as the charter of NHA, there are two major functions of NHA. We do the production as we also do financing. So we have a lot of projects right now by which our major, by and large, our main task is to produce. We also have some projects, Mr. Chair, and members of the board or the committee that we also finance. So the question whether or not what is really the function of NHA, uh, pointly, I will, uh, for the record, Mr. Chair, is both. So we produce and at the same time we finance. I think I'm addressing the, the question, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions that can be, from my colleagues, that can be directed to uh, NHA, uh, to June Escalada? So if your algorithm, uh, Administrator Escalada, is concerned, uh, you're basing you're basing the the number of ISF from uh, the backlogs uh, that that you're addressing right now. Tama po ba yan? Ulitin ko, siguro kayo na lang yung kayo na lang yung umupo ng uh, dishud uh, to to address because figures are figures. Hindi tayo hindi tayo aabante nito if if the figures would be conflicting because uh, if uh, NEDA is a uh, uh, accurate the, the 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 reverse migration which I mentioned a while ago would would lessen this this backlog, and 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 with this backdrop, uh, I would like to hear from the finance sector, bearing in mind the following. Years ago, years ago, we had Republic Act seven eight three five, or the CISFA Act of nineteen ninety four. Uh, alam siguro to nung mga matagal na sa housing sector, referring to Attorney Kabling, Dr. Bustos, or even those coming from a uh, uh, field guarantee corporation, there was a law before which already expired, granting housing sector 5 billion pesos for five years. And it came to a point that the problem of uh, financing and production was again highlighted. And it came to a point that the plan to have a, a robust uh, smoky mountain that should, that should have showcased this program, uh, sad to say, quote unquote, became a dismal failure. Ayaw na natin maulit ito. Ayaw na natin maulit ito. Ayaw hindi tayo papayag na maulit ito. Now, now that we, had, we have a dishod, we have a a good administrator, administrator of uh, NHA uh, functioning. So, based on the bills that we filed, uh, 1774 and 203 of uh, Senator Go, paano po hindi mauulit ito? We have engaged now the local government units. I'll be asking the ILG and uh, May Mayor D in so far as the 0.5% tax. Uh, that, that can be assessed by LGUs. So, paano po yung, yung mistakes natin noon ay hindi na mauulit. Before, it was just 5 uh, billion. Now, we're talking of a, a 1.722 trillion program, uh, an ambitious program. How, how, how would you... Uh, th this is how the financing uh, guy should answer this. How, how, how do we ensure that the missteps made years ago or decades ago would not be repeated? Uh, I'll be asking 
National Home Mortgage Finance because you'll be at the front front of this. And then thereafter, Shapsi, uh, Attorney Kabling, and then uh, the Field Guarantee Corporation, and uh, Secretary Del Rosario, if you're uh, listening, uh, feel, feel free to uh, interject. Tas mo lang yung kamay mo. So we go to, first we go to NHMFC because you're the one uh, mentioned in this bill. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Bustos, if you're here. If you're I, I'm here. Good afternoon, uh, the chairman and all the other senators. Uh, the project mentioned uh, was usually mentioned as one of the first securitization because uh, my predecessors did actually did not get involved uh, at that time. But at the passage of the Securitization Act, we have uh, been more strict in terms of doing such securitization. We follow the law strictly. Uh, the underlying assets are audited by an external auditor. We use Price Waterhouse. Uh, it's bidded out. Uh, the the securities are rated by a third party. We use bill rating, and then it goes to BSP and SEC. So there are now more safeguards in terms of. Uh, possible uh, possible uh, prevention of uh, something which happened uh, as, as mentioned by the senator so so i feel that uh, with the passage of the securitization act and 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 the more uh, third parties involved most of them non government uh, we can prevent such uh, event from happening again in the future uh, mr senator so uh, after having read the two bills you are assuring this committee that we have safeguards in place. Hindi na mauulit yan. Po, wala po kasi dati yung securitization law dati during that time that happened. So ngayon po, bago mga pag-securitize, ang dami pong dadaanan. And, and most of them, well, some of them are non-government. It's very hard to, uh, well, get past leading accounting firms and appeal ratings, which is a third party. It also goes through SEC, uh, BSP. So mar marami pong dadaanan bago, bago mangyari po yung mga issuance of securitization. If the, under the bills, uh, as proposed, if, even if the bonds that can be issued by NMHFC would be exempt from registration requirements under the securities regulations law. Ang, ang, ang mangyayari naman po, uh, it's going to pass through a depart, uh, an agency of the shoot. Uh, it's headed by Ator Nagila. So, sila po, ang, ang feeling po kasi namin, mas familiar yung issued in terms of housing rather than SEC. Although, SEC has been doing a good job, pero mabilis din po ang turnover, kumisa na delay because the new people have to be briefed again. So, allowed naman po under the security regulation code. Yes, yes, na, I understand. Uh, opo. So, ang yeah. uh, pinupropose po namin, I think pipirmahan na po ni Secretary uh, Secretary uh, Secretario, yung, yung alternative uh, compliance, it will be under uh, what, what what used to be a department of HLURB is now a, a department of the issue. They will be the one that will do the, the review po that used to be done by SEC. But, but uh, Attorney Bustos, if what I heard from uh, Secretary Chua a while ago is correct, that uh, incentives would be even uh, under the proposed create law would even be given to the housing sector would you would you uh, see a, a, a disconnect uh, between the the house securitization registration that will be done by the should and what should have been done regularly by the Securities and Exchange Commission the 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 function done by SEC lang naman po is to make sure that uh, there is protection for investors, which is their main function. My, my feeling is with the two requirements of the Securitization Act, which is the requirement of portfolio auditor, which is a third party, and a rating by a third party rating agencies, I, I think those two functions po will protect the investors. So, yun naman pong role to the issue is just to make sure that the underlying are really appropriate housing there under the Balanced Housing Act, mga, mga ano ba yan, uh, under the, the limits set by securitization, uh, by the, by the issue, are they, are they classified as economic, are they classified as low cost, or are they classified as socializing? And, and I think, mas appropriate to ang mag-evaluate is the issue rather than SEC.
Correct, correct. I agree. Uh, ang iniiwasan lang natin dito, attorney, next, baka next time. Sana wag mangyari. Magkaroon naman tayo ng Senate investigation. Ay, wag naman sana mangyari. Fraud naman yung ating... Opo, 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 opo. Excuse lang po, baka magalit ang IBP. Hindi po ako lawyer. I'm just a, yes, a former uh, teacher po. po. Uh, Secretary Del Rosario, you have a comment. Kapipirma mo lang daw nung uh, nabanggit. Uh, 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 naka, nasa death po niya. Hindi pa po napipirma. Ah, hindi pa napipirmahan. Uh, uh, nasa death uh, po niya. Uh, I'm sure the, your legal team is uh, studying this. Secretary Del Rosario, any comment on this? If, if you're not ready, we can... Uh, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, uh, agree that the uh, department order is now being rooted to my staff. And it will be uh, given to me uh, by next week of my uh, approval, uh, we have to establish the uh, balance uh, uh, mechanism so that we can have establish control, control mechanism so that this uh, will not be abused and we can uh, provide the necessary uh, regulatory powers uh, to ensure that th those projects are in order. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Dr. Bustos, uh, your comments on the two bills? Uh, we we a paper to, to be submitted. We we uh, well we, we submitted a similar comment to the House. I think we submitted one today. We strongly support them both. We agree with the proposal. Ang, ang, ang comment ko lang po yung funding uh, twenty five billion from the GAA and twenty five billion from RDB. Then that will take forever. Oh, ang kasi we oh, assuming we. We we have a dividend of 500 million a year. Ang suggestion ko lang o proposal, I don't know whether SSS or Pag-ibig will agree. There, we have a, on our books 22 billion uh, loan that was given by SSS a long time ago. It's hardly being serviced. Uh, to, to make the two active, maybe the 25 billion that was uh, uh, supposed to be funded over time by uh, dividends from us, maybe we can give the equity to SSS, 22 billion, and another 3 billion to Pag-ibig. So our capital structure will be 50% national government, and the other half will be SSS and Pag-ibig from existing debt to us, magkaka debt to equity, ho, rather than press funding coming from them. Yun lang ang proposal ko sa sir, funding. Sir, we still have to uh, secure your position paper. I was asking the secretary. I, I, I signed it kaninang umaga po, baka hindi umapot ka agad. Uh, okay, so we, we, uh, while we await your... Uh, we're having a second hearing. Uh, opo, opo. We'll don't be, you worry, we'll invite the social security system as well. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Felix Bustos. May, may, may be here from uh, Attorney Kabling, Shafsi. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, po, Mr. Chair, and honorable members of this committee here, and the secretaries and other secretaries who are here. And good afternoon to our chairman, uh, Secretary Eduardo, Eduardo Del Rosario. First, sir, we adhere to the figures of Bishud uh, regarding the counting of ISF. But you would just like to stress that uh, 40 per 46 percent. Uh, Attorney Kabling, if, uh, insofar as you're concerned, the issued figure of uh, 3,753,537 is accurate. Yes, Your Honor. As far as so, our so the NHA account. figure, it follows that the NHA figure is not accurate. I am not saying so, that, Honor, but for our record... Kasi kalahati ito, eh, 3,753,000 as against, wala pa ngang kalahati, as against 1,037,000. So, which is... Which? In our record, to the, to the records of the issue, Your Honor. Uh, Go ahead, Attorney Kabli. Out of that uh, number, Your Honor, we would like to stress that 46% of that belong to the low income bracket and 64% of that belong are the real ISF. Now, SHEPSI is mandated to cater to the housing provision of the low income bracket, both this low income and ISF. In the CISPA, Your Honor, we are only given, because the CISPA allocated funds for housing, however, there was already a distribution on to which agency will these funds go. Chepsi was only given one billion per year for twelve years, Your Honor. So we are we now fully utilize the the twelve billion allocated to us, Your Honor. And we are happy to report because it is really financing that we are doing that our CER, the collection efficiency rate, which is community based is actually 70 to 74 percent, uh, Your Honor. And we are also happy to, to report that according to the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, 
uh, the approach of community mortgage program, which we are doing, uh, is really transforming communities. And that's the reason why, Your Honor, we were given funding from the ILG for the waterways. Out of the 50 billion, again, we were only given 12 billion, Your Honor. And according to the Asia Pacific studies, the production and the community built by Chepsi are actually transforming, really, the, the lives of our beneficiaries, Your Honor. So that's why, Your Honor, we support the Attorney two bills. Attorney Kapkarin, you're, you're saying that even with uh, COVID-19? Uh, no, Your Honor, that was, that was the previous year's uh, report, Your Honor. But now, for this year, we continue, Your Honor, to, to do our housing provisions program in the provinces, Your Honor. We are limited in the Metro Manila and in the Metro Cebu. But in the provinces, we continue to, to provide housing provisions. We continue to talk with the local governments. And we really strongly collaborate with the local governments right now, Your Honor. But al although we maintain and uh, observe the social distancing requirement and other health requirements, Your Honor, and some of our procedures and processes, we do online, Your Honor. So, but now, Your Honor, we have no more funds. We are now relying on our inflows. We have about... Uh, Three to four billion in our in our deposit, which are actually reflows. And we are sad to to note, Your Honor, that for next year, 2021, for our CMP program, we are given zero by DBM. Although we are given a billion for our HDH program, uh, which is the waterways uh, community in Metro uh, Manila, Your Honor. So, but this is just actually. The finishing touches of our HDH programs. But for our CMP program, Your Honor, we are given zero because they say we have now to utilize our uh, reflows. And that's the reason, Your Honor, in partnership also with the National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation, we are now uh, securitizing our portfolio and we are hoping to, to securitize about 2.5 billion of our portfolio next year with the help of the National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation. So we support the bill. Attorney Kabling, perhaps uh, when you submit your position paper, clarify that item relative to the RIT laws. You're referring to REIT. Because my understanding is uh, we, we, we have, even during this pandemic uh, period, the, the, RIT, the RIT law uh, is, is really being positively utilized. For instance, Ayala Corporation, BPI, uh, just last week uh, uh, purchased the, the, the Ayala issued, Ayala, uh, issued uh, RIT bonds, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I think this is one of the positives coming out from the uh, finance uh, sector. So uh, your, your, your uh, position paper should, should clarify the exact uh, negative effect uh, if ever, of uh, the non-utilization of the RIT law, because from my understanding is that I've even read a full-page ad coming from the Bank of the Philippine Islands uh, relative to the RIT bonds that they're now uh, floating, uh, Attorney Kabling. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, because we, we, we rely so much on the GAA budget because we still have, we still have to utilize, fully utilize the, the CISPA fund and we have just fully utilized it last year, but we continue to collect from the community out of their loans, and we are able to collect so much. And now DBM is saying us, we're not giving you budget for next year. You have to use your leaf reflows, Your Honor. And if that is insufficient, Your Honor, that's why we are being creative. We are floating our van also uh, next year through National Home Mortgage Finance Corporation uh, for our 2.5 billion uh, portfolio, uh, Your Honor. So we also fully support, Your Honor, the proposal of Senator Pia Cayetano that uh, moving forward, uh, housing provision, Your Honor, should really be geared towards smart cities and smart communities. And that for that reason, Your Honor, we're also working on our reorganization and we'll be submitting it uh, in two weeks to the department because under the issued law, it is the secretary that is supposed to recommend the approval to the office of the president of our reorganization. We have created, we have some, we did some innovations. So we have uh, put up a resiliency, a community resili resiliency department, we have also put up a resettlement management to ensure proper estate management department, Your Honor, and we have also the program enhancement, Your Honor, to provide possible interventions on livelihood and other uh, 
uh, enhancements for the community, Your Honor. Because Shopsi's mandate is really to lend money to organized communities. So we are saying we are financing organized communities. We are financing their plan to build houses, to build their communities. We are just financing their dream. However, we just don't lend money. We assist and we supervise the credit they get from us. So that's why we also have our engineering group. We have our social workers to ensure that we just don't build the, the physical shelter provision. We want to ensure that we are indeed building sustainable communities, Your Honor. So again, I would like to say with respect to CISPA fund, we have fully utilized them, Your Honor, and we're hoping that this proposed bill of National Housing Development Act be approved and that we be given fresh funds. Uh, and we support the bill of uh, Senator Cayetano that it should really go in hand in hand. The, the more we provide shelter provisions, it should be now futuristic on building smart communities, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you, Attorney Gabling. With, with the indulgence of Senator Cayetano, I know the, your, your resource person is ready here. I would like to have a quick, uh, some quick responses coming from the local government units. I, I would like to have Mayor D, my good friend Mayor D of uh, Isabella, as well as uh, Yusek Echeverri, uh, make a quick response relative to section 43, uh, which will be, which is supposed to be amended, that will now have a, a uh, socialized housing tax component that can be utilized by LGUs for the development of socialized housing projects and construction and estate management of public, public rental housing of the LGUs. Uh, I'm sure You've read the proposed measures. Uh, I'll start with uh, uh, Mayor D. Thereafter, uh, you, the DILG USEC, which are very Mayor D, recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, we fully support that. Uh, actually, uh, especially now, Mr. Chair, we all know that um, in the next uh, few years, uh, uh, all the cities will really uh, be densely populated, and that's why there's really a need uh, to provide uh, housing. And not just uh, simple housing, as mentioned earlier by Senator Pia, uh, we should really be uh, more innovative and uh, and really take care of, uh, of uh, their new ways, new designs uh, uh, to really uh, cater cater our uh, uh, constituents. So I, I we, we definitely uh, support uh, this bill, uh, Mr. Chair. So, Mayor D, uh, what, what would happen is that this will now be mandatory. So, no negative effects in so far as your constituents' uh, reaction uh, when, when, we, when we impose this, uh, assuming this is imposed, the 0.5% the, uh, zero, uh, zero tax on assessed value of lands? Well, definitely, Mr. Chair. Meron at meron, pag tax na pinag-uusapan, I'd be uh, uh, um, uh, honest to say that if, if you really talk about uh, taxes, uh, especially yung mga uh, developers, ito ay uh, uh, hindi ganun ka-welcome sa kanila. But if this is this will be used uh, to, to, you know, uh, provide um, um, housing to our constituents, then I'm sure it will be, uh, we can easily explain and let them understand uh, the essence of this uh, tax, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mayor D. Uh, DILG, and then thereafter, BIR pala nandito eh, representing uh, DOF. Uh, Yusek Echeverri. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, the DILG interposed no objection, if ever, um, that would be for the benefit of all LGUs. But um, can we be given enough time again to study the, the proposal further and refer the matter to ULAP to get their stand as well um, so that it could be more comprehensive, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Because in effect, th this will this will complement the the initiatives of NHA and they should, in so far as uh, the production of uh, lo when we think of local local uh, socialized housing projects. BIR, one quick uh, retort. BIR, you're still there. Bureau of Internal Revenue. This is Mr. Kabantak of the Bureau of Internal Revenue. Good, af good afternoon, Your Honors. I'm ahead, Larry Marcel from the BIR. Uh, on the uh, Senate Bill 2003, uh, the BIR uh, supports this bill, uh, particularly 
on its uh, objective of uh, significantly reducing the country's uh, housing backlog. There are provisions there that uh, uh, provide uh, tax, uh, there are tax provisions there, but uh, when we examine them, uh, there are laws that, that uh, they are consistent with existing laws on, on tax exemption. For instance, the uh, tax exemptions uh, under 72-79 enjoyed by private sector participating in socialized housing. Uh, the exemptions of uh, investment on the asset on socialized housing and uh, low-cost uh, asset-backed securities, which is uh, exempt under the Securitization Act of uh, 2004. We also support the uh, proposed bill on the on the past tracking of uh, permits uh, certifications uh, pursuant to the Ease of Doing Business Act. Thank you. Thank you, BIR. Uh, field guarantee is here, but uh, we expect you to submit your position paper as well. Uh, field guarantee corporation. Uh, I, I, I hope the other resource persons will stick around. Uh, upon the request of Senator Cayetano, we have a resource person vir virtually coming from uh, the United Kingdom. I'd like to recognize Mr. Richard Bellingham of the Institute for Future Cities, the University of Strathclyde, the United Kingdom. Uh, Mr. Bellingham, you're recognized. Good day, sir. Good day. Are you still there? Uh, good day. Good day. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, it's evening in London. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. It's, uh, yes. It's, uh, it's, uh, well, it's early in the morning here. So, uh, yeah. Basically, this is a continuation of our previous hearing. Uh, relative to the bill filed by Senator Cayetano on sustainable development of sustainable cities and communities in the country. But uh, I, I hope that your presentation would take into consideration the present pandemic, how it would affect uh, uh, cities uh, as they aspire into that uh, sustainable cities threshold uh, recognition, how, how, how the pandemic would, would change all, all human settlements uh, aspirations, um, Mr. Uh, Bellingham. So Bellingham, you have the floor. Thank you for this. Um, I think the the bill you are proposing is is ambitious and appropriate. And as as you know, SDG eleven has uh, a strong focus on on the resilience. Um, of cities and systems and the guarding of citizens against these. Um, the current pandemic is one of those examples. But our cities have been facing challenges and, and change for many, many years, for, for, you know, for ever since there have been cities, they have faced the challenges of climate change, uh, economic change, uh, flooding, other disasters. Um, COVID-19 is a, another change that our cities must face. Um, I have to say, I think that how our cities will respond to this is to some extent unpredictable. And what that means is in terms of developing forward strategies for our cities, those strategies need to be flexible. The infrastructures that our cities have in place need to be flexible. The economies need to be flexible. Um, so economies which are over, overly reliant on a single sector will find themselves far more vulnerable. Um, and social systems also need to be flexible. So these, these multiple flexibilities need to be built in um, to how we respond to the latest challenge, uh, COVID-19. Um, COVID-19 is likely to uh, lead to changes in the way that uh, people travel, um, use uh, their requirements for housing, and the pattern of economic activity in cities. So we are likely to see changes in the centres of our cities 
for example, will people travel to uh, for entertainment, for shopping, etc., in the same way as they have in the past, or will they prefer to uh, stay at home and consume um, services online um, where possible? So uh, I would say uh, it's there isn't an easy answer on on how to respond to COVID-19. Um, but the key thing is to, I would suggest, design um, solutions and strategies which are designed around uh, a number of scenarios of possible futures and to test those scenarios against to assess those strategies against those scenarios so that um, we can uh, see, check that the scenarios are correct. In, in creating those strategies, your LGUs, and this is the vital point, to, uh, vital point for your bill, is, is the need to ensure that your LGUs have the right skills in place, have the right data in place in order to allow them to make informed decisions um, and and have the right funding in place. And I, I know you've had previous uh, discussions around these issues, but um, it's, it's really vital that if these obligations are placed on LGUs, that they have appropriate um, uh, resourcing in place to, to deliver. I would suggest that in in taking forward the the actions, because what you're after in this bill is real action on the ground. What you want are transformed cities, cities which are better places to live, which are which are easier, which provide the the basics of human life, which um, you know in terms of housing, access to affordable energy, access to education, health, good quality jobs, and, and of course, our good quality places to live in terms of urban spaces. So those, um, those goals, they need to be balanced against each other. So in strategic development, what we can't do is take a single one of those goals, like economic growth, or indeed the response to COVID-19, and say that this is the only goal or measure of success. We need to balance those different goals in order to and, to, and do that over a long time period in order to give the optimal outcome. And for different cities, that balancing process will be different. The needs and priorities of different cities vary so that um, and that needs to be taken into consideration. But what I would suggest is that alongside that provision of appropriate skills, information and resources, that perhaps you could consider taking a, a selected number of cities through an accelerated strategic planning process to take forward the goals of this bill. And that that is used as a learning process to assist other cities to um, deliver effective strategies um, down the line. Uh, so that that is basically this isn't a kind of all or nothing strategy. Your strategies will have to, and the LGU city strategies will have to change um, over time. Um, the other point I wanted to make is that it is very easy for us to, when we talk about cities, to sometimes get into the mode of talking about city problems and seeing them as, as challenges and a, as a, you know, a series of challenges and a series of problems. But the reality is, as, as you know very well, that the great majority of Filipino people will be living in, in cities and urban areas in a relatively short time. That means that cities will become the core 
of Philippine society. They will, they will consume the majority of the resources and they will become the dominant drivers of the Philippine economy. And that means there is a huge opportunity, a significant opportunity to develop those cities, as you are suggesting, in a sustainable, resilient way that delivers long-term benefits for the Philippines, the nation as a whole. Um, and the alternative isn't a good one. The alternative is not to take that rational, strategic approach. And if you and you end up with you know chaotic uh, development over a long period of time, which doesn't deliver the wider benefits in terms of uh, reduced environmental impacts and improved social outcomes that you are quite rightly seeking. So enshrining this in the SDG 11 in law is a, is a great step forward, but the key to success is ensuring that that law is fully supported with the right resources. I'll stop talking now. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Richard Bellingham. If, uh, with the permission of Senator Cayetano, I forgot to acknowledge the representative Department of Finance. Perhaps I, the Department of Finance representative is still around. Can you just wave? Are you still around? Uh, this is relative to the twin measures I mentioned a while ago. Uh, DOF, DOF, DILG, uh, DISHUD, and even uh, the leagues, the local leagues present here. Perhaps uh, the, the committee would be guided properly relative to Senate Bill 203 and 1774 if you could submit individually a position paper because these are appropriations measures that would incorporate the effects of the Mandana Supreme Court ruling. Uh, Secretary Del Rosario, I'm now I'm now looking at the possibility of uh, a situation wherein the Mandana's Supreme Court ruling would unlock billions of funds to local government units, and local government units, hand in hand with the Department of Housing, working towards the achievement of your housing goals. So it will not just be a, a national government initiative, but you will have local government units, since they will be carrying the brunt, working with NHA, working with the SHUD and other financing institutions in utilizing the funds that they will be having on a windfall basis for how for the housing sector if we can have dof if we can have the ilg if we can have the show then the leagues submit the, your position papers relative to the statement i just mentioned i think that would really guide this committee and make more current and relevant the bill senator go and in, in this representation just filed salamat senator cayetano uh, ganun na rin para sa uh, dof so we, we entertain questions, uh, Senator Pia, uh, addressed to Mr. Richard Be Be Bellingham. We still have the Department of Energy here around. Uh, we still have the NCPAG, uh, UP Diliman around. The Department of Health is still around. And uh, the league representatives are still around. Uh, Mayor Fortes, uh, the LMP sec sec gen is still around. Senator Pia, uh, you have a question addressed to... Mr. Richard Bellingham. Kung wala ako muna, isa lang, isang mabilis lang. Uh, okay. Mr. Mr. Bellingham, uh, with the permission, sorry, Senator Pia. I have your position paper. Uh, I underlined a, a, a sentence, by 2030, eight in, in every ten Filipinos are projected to be living in cities and urban areas. I underlined this. But prior to your arrival, we were talking about a reverse migration brought about by COVID-19 pandemic with Filipinos going to the countryside, coming from the Metro Manila area, going to the countryside in search, not just in search of new opportunities, but going to the countryside 
because of the pandemic. So would would your would would, would your proposition still stand that by 2030, eight in every ten Filipinos will be living in urban areas? Uh, I mean, it's, no, it's, yeah. I would I would say that that's not my projection. Uh, it's a projection by the World Bank. Um, so the World Bank made that projection stating that 8 in 10 Filipinos. Of course, they made that projection before the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, this kind of echoes the point I was making earlier about the unpredictable nature of changes that our cities face. So the need for flexible solutions. So the there, you're right, there is a risk that, uh, or let's say a possibility that um, you have reverse migration or different patterns of migration which change that figure. And what that has is significant implications for investments in infrastructure, for businesses setting up, for the creation of education and health services. Because if you don't have clear um, pictures of how you expect the world to be, it could mean that you end up investing in both public and private services uh, in cities. And then you find your customers, your citizens, are somewhere else. So you end up with white elephant services. So this is, this is a risk. So there is a need to create the infrastructure and the services in a way that is flexible, that can cope with that type of change. And yeah, that, that you're right, that's a World Bank projection on um, the pattern of expected growth of Filipino cities, but we do not know this for certain. Um, historically, in many countries, uh, particularly developing world countries, we have seen cities tending to, to grow and grow significantly due to uh, the economic opportunities offered amongst, amongst uh, many things. Um, but, you know, there can be countervailing circumstances which could re reverse that. Um, equally, it's, it's possible that um, in in the next two years that some treatment or vaccine for COVID-19 comes into play and that this leads to this, uh, you know, a reversion back to the trend that we were seeing pre pre before the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so I have to say, I have to say, you know, the basic uh, uh, situation is we don't know and therefore in in terms of strategic planning, the use of scenarios where on one hand we might have a scenario for city growth and on the other hand a scenario for city shrinkage and we look at the implications for our strategies of those different, different alternative futures and we test whether they are some, our strategies work in those different alternative futures would be the way I would suggest going, rather than trying to pick an absolute winner for this is how we believe the future will be. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Bellingham. Senator Caetano, uh, any follow-up question? Yes. Actually, I had the same uh, question as you, um, because uh, maybe not just in the Philippines, but uh, definitely in the Philippines, uh, we are pushing for that, they call it Malik Provincia, and um, we, we do hope that it will help decongest the cities. And I think um, what, what I actually, my, my statement is really directed to our other resource persons here, particularly uh, Secretary De La Rosa and uh, NEDA representatives are still here, that um, I think the key point that um, our resource person, Mr. Bellingham, was trying to make is that we need that element of flexibility and um, futures thinking requires that we we project various scenarios, we project various futures so that we are, we do have the availability. We do have the avail availability, we do have the, um, the option of, of shifting from one possibility to another and not just put our eyes on one possibility. Because in as much as we want to encourage Balik Provincia, if we do not provide for the necessary mechanisms that will support their lives there, 
then these people may most likely come back here, especially if they see that we're recovering from COVID, there are jobs here. For sure, they're going to flock back to the to the um, metropolitan centers. And therefore, uh, really, my my question is more uh, in um, in a, a, a agreement with our resource person that that flexibility is very important. That is my takeaway from his uh, statement. So it's not really a question, it's just supporting his statement. Um, I also read your position paper and um, I take note of the fact because when I drafted that bill, the sustainable development, the sustainable cities bill, the objective was to uh, include indicators that must be addressed. So whether it's, you know, uh, water security, food security, an education system in place. But I take um, strong, um, uh, I take note of your observation that when we address that, it should be taken as a whole. Because many times we'll invite resource persons and they'll each be experts in their own fields. And then no one really tries to cohesively put it together. And sometimes many times it becomes an all or nothing like oh we only have resources for this so let's address this like the water security and the food security um but you know it, it might have been very simple enough to integrate uh gender sensitivity and the safety of women and children in that um plan so i i take very strong note of that and maybe mr chair i'm just moving forward I don't know if the proper place will be in the bill or later on when the agencies make their rules and regulations that to ensure that all these relevant agencies come together to paint those different um, future scenarios together so that they don't leave one or the other behind. And I am very happy that um, uh, Mayor D was here because he's one of the mayors who's very proactive in... Um, um, ensuring that the SDGs are followed in his communities. Um, I think it's really that's just that. It was really reactions to, to what he said. Maybe one, one point, because I know we have a lot of resource persons left. Maybe one point, Mr. Bellingham, um, do you have any um, insight or uh, can you share any best practices on how the private sectors and how private sector meaning um, specifically um, you know, those with the, with the ability to invest, so whether they're in the education system or, or the water business, and then, and then individual uh, private sectors, you know, the community, the, the residents, how do you bring them all together and really um, put that in their mindset that it's worth the expense of going sustainable? It's worth the expense of interacting, of, uh, of um, you know, putting their... There, for them to also have that uh, feeling of empowerment that their needs are being taken into consideration of and that they are being heard and that they can plan for their future. Yeah, okay. so I, I, I agree with the point you're driving out there uh, and that the, gaining the support of people and communities and indeed business uh, investors is extremely important to effective delivery. And and can accelerate the delivery of your strategies very, very significantly. Um, getting those those different stakeholders on board, I think, in the in the first instance, is about understanding what they want. So, so what they need, what their priorities are. So, if they say our priority number one is, let's say, it's decent housing or or good jobs, or, you know, a better health system, whatever it is. The, what that suggests to me is that if we're delivering environmental initiatives, for example, is those environmental initiatives must also try and achieve those other goals. They must also, the environmental initiatives must also try and deliver jobs, for example. They must also uh, try to seek to improve health outcomes or, or whatever it is. But it's about creating win-wins. It's, it's not about saying this is an either-or or, you know, um, we've reduced pollution or carbon emissions, job done, we're walking away. It's about, it's about respecting the needs of those communities and or indeed investors 
and saying, we understand what you want. How can we design our solutions and strategies so that they meet your express needs as well as these wider strategic needs? Thank you, Mr. Bellingham. You mentioned something about uh, the environment. Since we have the representative of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, perhaps I can recognize him or her. Uh, Dr. Who's the representative of DNR? Simplicia Pasicolan. Dr. Uh, Pasicolan, uh, segue. I, the, the doc, uh, Mr. Bellingham mentioned about uh, the environment. The, the, my question is this. Positively, COVID-19 aided your development because of the reduction of pollution. EDSA, uh, even in uh, congested areas. We, we really have a, a, uh, a, a, a experience. We experienced a huge drop in air pollution. And uh, I, everybody probably would agree that uh, we have cleaner air right now. Uh, 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 emissions coming from vehicles uh, drastically reduced by, I think, more than 25% or 50%, especially when we were still under uh, ECQ. So how, how, would you, how would you capitalize on this? How would you sustain this? Uh, I, I, I'm not saying that uh, COVID-19 should should stay for uh, linger on for a longer time, but how would you sustain what we have achieved so far, DNR? Um, Mr. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Honorable Senators, good afternoon. Uh, I am Simplicia Pasicolan from uh, representing the DNR uh, from ERDB, the research arm of the DNR, Los, based in Los Baños. Now, as to your question, sir, uh, we need to pursue that. Through mass transit system, uh, I, we are so uh, we're so discouraging the use of private vehicles because most of the time, iisa lang ang nagda-drive, ang, ang nakasakay or dalawa. But if we continue to pursue the mass transit system, tingin nga namin, uh, dapat nung March at walang masyadong tao, uh, puspusan yung um, infrastructure to give way to mass transit system. That's one. So maganda po yung uh, bumaba yung ating um, GHG emission. Pero tumaas po yung solid waste in so far as healthcare uh, materials uh, are disposed. Now, uh, some even uh, LGU heads are, um, ano yun, sinasabi, sunugin nyo na lang yung mga face mask nyo. And we're so uh, against uh, burning. Yung pong ganon. Um, though yung GHG emission or vehicular emission had uh, decreased, pero nag-increase naman po yung solid waste, yung ganun. And we need to address that. Especially, most of those are toxic and hazardous. Yun po. Um, sana po nasagot yung aming tanong. DNR has uh, prepared a position uh, on... Uh, SB65, which I, we submitted to DNR Central, uh, and I understand uh, it will be sent, or it was already sent to the Senate. Uh, yun po. If I may, uh, I, I, we were asked to prepare a presentation as to the position of the DNR. We prepared 10 slides, if you're allowed, it, or I'll, I will just read it, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, quickly, uh, Dr. Pasikolan, what I'm saying is this. It was just because of a trick of luck that we were able to reduce emissions. But my, uh, in terms of costs, department saved uh, a lot. But uh, what 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 I'm saying is, is, is there a possibility of uh, sustaining this even without the pandemic, even without that uh, extra amount that would be used for landfills uh, relative to the face masks, the PPEs. Uh, Etc. So, the, the 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 better way to look at it is: is there going to be a a better outlook or shift in mindset, in so far as the department's uh, protocol is concerned? Marami yata yung achieve, eh. bigla anto eh, but last couple of months. So, paano mo maitutuloy even without pandemic, uh, even without uh, the the COVID nineteen uh, assisting you? Can, can you, can't you, ito na yung futuristic thinking na sinasabi ni Senator Cayetano eh. Meron ba kayong pwedeng maisip na, uh, for instance, 
face mask should be utilized uh, in this manner. Uh, the, the river should be uh, should be clean because of uh, et cetera, et cetera, non-utilization of walang lumalabas. So, wala ba kayo maisip na ganun? Uh, there should be culture change and we are pursuing yung ibaba ang consumerism. Uh, let's do away with the throwaway society and let's aim uh, ang sabi nila napaka-ambitious let's aim for zero waste. Posible po yun. Um, if we just have all of us, 109 million Filipinos, will change our ways and uh, aim to reduce our ways or aim for a zero waste. It, it could be done. Uh, so, magandang simulain. Uh, una, napababa natin yung um, vehicular emission dahil walang masyadong nagpa-apply na uh, vehicles along the road. Uh, although, uh, to a greater degree, dumat dumagsa yung healthcare waste. Uh, the PPE suits that are disposable, how do we dispose, how do we dispose that? That's a huge uh, question. Kung, and, and most of those are, are non-biodegradable. Yung ganun ba? And, we, we understand, uh, uh, Dr. Pasikola. Siguro yung slides nyo, uh, if we have, uh, kasi we'll, we'll, we'll be having a plenary in a few minutes. So, what, what you're saying is this. Uh, huge reduction in terms of uh, particulate matters, but you should also you should also calibrate this with the huge demand for power emanating from coal and diesel-fed power plants. Uh, this should be this should be balanced, uh, Doctor Pasikolan. Uh, we are um, stressing the renewable kasi na, energy. Kasi nasa bahay lahat so maraming gastos ng kuryente, maraming gumagamit ng kuryente, and these are all uh, coal-fed or diesel-fed. Yes, sir. But uh, some of those are using uh, the solar panel now. Uh, if we can only uh, ibababa yung presyo ng solar panels, uh, do sa aming community, dito sa Los Baños, uh, we are encouraging to some degree to go for uh, renewable energy. Isa po yun, yung paggamit ng solar panel. Uh, so that's one. Uh, lagi namin sinasabi, there should be a change in lifestyle. So if each one has that consciousness to reduce our waste and change our lifestyle and uh, uh, lower consumerism, we can achieve yung, uh, yung goal natin na ibaba. Ibaba yung uh, solid waste or go for zero waste and um, ibaba yung... Uh, vehicular emissions. And then, as to the vehicular emission, uh, we're also pursuing this mass transit system. Uh, pwedeng pwede po yan. Yung po, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Yes, and, and you also have to recognize the efforts of Senator Cayetano in pursuing that bicycle lane initiative. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pasikolan. We have a representative from the Department of Health, Doc, uh, Mr. Rodrigo Napolan. I, I heard your, you have a very short presentation in so far as the department is concerned. Good afternoon, Mr. Yeah. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, and then to honorable senators and colleagues in the government service and partners in the development. So I'm Roderick Napulan, one of the division chiefs of Health Facility Development Bureau. Mr. Chair, if you will allow me to read the position paper of the Department of Health on the House Senate Bill Number 65, an act providing for the development of sustainable cities and communities in the country and for the other purposes. I cannot see you. I cannot see you, sir. Uh, Sorry, Mr. Chair, my camera is not working well, not Mr. Working. Chair, because of internet. Okay, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the Department of Health supports Senate Bill Number 65, which aims to prepare cities and communities towards sustainability. In the context of health, the, the measures aim at improving health outcomes by addressing known determinants of health. This proposed legislation will strengthen the department's efforts in providing a comprehensive approach approach to the development and advancement of population health. Cities that grow in unsustainable and unplanned ways are at risk of the following. First, housing-related risks such as infectious diseases, outbreaks of diarrhea, and extreme weather diseases. Second, nutrition insecurity that victimizes both the poor for lack of access to nutritious foods and the affluent 
whose access to fresh foods and unprocessed food is reduced. Third, sanitation and waste management risk. Fourth, climate risk such as heat waves and intensifying natural disasters set to impact the poor. And lastly, health effects attributable to short-term and long-term exposure to air pollution. Managing this risk and other determinants of health is therefore crucial in improving health outcomes. In the current response to aforementioned threats, the Department of Health issued Administrative Order Number 2017-007 to set a standard in the provision of the essential service packages, medical and public health nutrition, water and sanitation hygiene, and mental health and psychosocial support. In view of this, the DOA supports the passage of the bill on account of its potential to strengthen current efforts for the health sector in putting emphasis on the management of determinants of health. The department proposes the following recommendations for consideration in the response to the bill. A, include clear and direct interventions and solutions to promote green urban planning to address and prevent problems on traffic, pollution, flooding, and crimes that directly affect the health of the population and include water sanitation and hygiene as an indicator of health as it contributes to the morbidity of the affected population in terms of disaster due to water and sanitation diseases. Respectfully submitted, Mr. Chair, and we will submit the signed position paper once um, routed to our Secretary of Health, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative, coming from Department of Health. Uh, we, we still have some representatives coming from the University of the Philippines, but uh, in terms of arrive, arrival, Dr. Eva Maria de La Paz, the Executive Director of the uh, University of the Philippines, Manila, uh, I think she was in uh, as early as uh, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Uh, perhaps we can recognize Dr. Eva Maria de La Paz of the University of the Philippines. Are you Mr. still uh, Mr. Chair, before you yes. recognize her, um, perhaps if there's no other question to our resource person, Mr. Bellingham, since he's from halfway all over the world, we can excuse him. Of course, I'm sure he's welcome to stay, but uh, may we ask the chair to uh, let him know if we can excuse him. Are there questions coming from the local government units? Uh, we have a, a, a vice a mayor from uh, a mayor, mayor Cincha Fortes. We have Mayor uh, Faustino D. Uh, any questions that can that you can propound to our uh, foreign guest, Doctor D, Doctor D, Mayor D? Hola, uh, Doctor Bellingham. It, it's a pleasure having you around. Uh, your your inputs relative to sustainability and uh, the COVID nineteen situation, how, how it affects uh, planning and uh, the environment are will surely be part of our committee reports. And uh, we, we really thank you for uh, sharing your time, even it's, what time is it now in your in your place? Uh, it's, it's about quarter past seven in the morning at the moment. So. Oh, I'm sorry, we oh. woke you up. <laughs> you're you're yeah. in Chester or London? I'm, I'm in Edinburgh, uh, I'm in, I live in Edinburgh in Scotland. So. In Scotland, so give our regards to the Queen. Uh, <laughs> we will do. Senator um, Cayetano is excusing you now. Thank you Unless so you have much. A final because... Statement. No, but thank you very much for the opportunity for participating. I think what you're doing is extremely interesting. And uh, if we can assist in the future in terms of, um, you know, scenario development or, or whatever, uh, we would be delighted to, to be involved. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, and a uh, good eye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. De La Paz, uh, you're recognized, if you're still around. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, magandang hapon po. Uh, this is my time to, to present our UP Manila statement po. Go ahead, go ahead, but we, we can't see you. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm here to sir. Um, okay, so go ahead, go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Can you, are you able to see my slides na po? Okay. Uh, magandang hapon po, Honorable Senators and uh, uh, Mr. Chair of the Committee, uh, Senator Francis Tolentino. Uh, please allow me po to present the UP Manila Position Statement on Senate Bill uh, Number 65. Um, I'll try to keep it very short. Uh, academic experts from different fields of med medical and health sciences, social sciences, natural sciences, and humanities, among others, were convened to generate consensus recommendations for, for the purpose of this statement. Our recommendations are based on our shared knowledge, practice, and conviction that first, cities are the key to our future. Second, urbanization has its benefits and harms to humans and the environment and in particular to human health and planetary health. Addressing concerns on globalization and urbanization is a timely and relevant concern. Urbanization actually leads to anthropocentric transformations of natural environments and ecosystems into built environments. And uh, anthropocentric interventions have both intended and unintended consequences. And as such, policy and governance should play a critical and pivotal role in ensuring that better management of built environments such as cities should lead to inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable ones. It is imperative that our country update its current laws on urbanization and development, frame a more responsive and concrete laws anchored on sustainable development, consider democracy, human health, and planetary health perspectives. We further assess, assert that pre, framing of laws and policies on urbanization and development should not only focus on density and economic development, but on an integrated and sustainable development approach and systems, where sustainable development approach toward uh, sustainable and livable cities and communities requiring responsive and responsible governance informed by effective deployment of appropriate and progressive urban leg legislation and policy frameworks, sound and innovative financing mechanisms, appropriate land governance, high quality and resilient urban planning and design, as well as a strong civil society. Um, we also assert that engaging the citizens, people as partners in development rather than beneficiaries mitigates culture of dependency and poverty and facilitates the formation of a strong civil society that's effectively involved in problem solving and decision making. The de deployment of built-in social and cultural capital such as resilient Filipino cultural traits such as bayanihan, damayan, malasakit, pakikipagkawang gawa, pagre-respeto sa kalikasan, pagsulong ng hustisya at karapatang pangtao, disiplina, pananampalataya sa may kapal, among others, are vital in achieving a uniquely Filipino model of sustainable and livable cities and communities. Um, we would like to uh, uh, put forth this new concept of planetary health and human health as a dual approach for human survival, biodiversity conservation, and sustainable development, which are vital elements for sustainable, livable cities and communities. The following policy recommendations are shared to achieve sustainable and livable cities and communities. Um, these are just a definition of terms that we are proposing to be included in the, uh, to be considered, I mean, to be considered uh, in the uh, proposed bill, but under including, uh, sorry, including about uh, what sustainable development is, what uh, sustainable urban development needs, uh, what is a sustainable city and community, as well as inclusive uh, city, which is referring to openness of the city to all people in all walks of life, uh, what a safe city is, and uh, what a resilient city is. Uh, we hope that uh, definition in the definition of terms, uh, these suggestions will be considered. But more importantly, uh, the provisions of a uniquely Filipino model should include uh, existing and emerging cities to be transformed into ganap na siyudad at pamayanan, um, where there will be safe built environment, green, green spaces, renewable energy sources, sustainable water systems, and solid waste management, which are barangay operated, 
sustainable transport and traffic systems, and uh, sustainable ecosystems, where biodiversity conservation and protection programs are, are highlighted. Accessible, affordable, and well-equipped health facilities such that um, we propose uh, fully equipped uh, and staffed health stations, clinics, pharmacies, with the capacity to do disease surveillance and outbreak response for every barangay. And the tertiary hospitals are also built every in every district. Um, of course, uh, because we are anticipating a lot of data management, uh, big uh, management of big data in the future, a highly efficient interconnectivity, self safe and well-maintained housing for all citizens, which was the topic of the uh, previous uh, uh, bills that were discussed, and as well as uh, well-equipped schools. Um, we also propose that it should contain um, well-equipped sports and recreation facilities, cultural and heritage centers, well-supplied public markets, one-stop shop for transactions of documents, even at the barangay level, and uh, uh, responsive law enforcement officers. Uh, this is just a list of what we also propose to be ecologically sound and culturally appropriate urban policy that will contain uh, about uh, issues on uh, simplified tax regime and, and, and business regulations, uh, improve access to global markets, reinvigorated manufacturing sector, etc. Um, again, we also propose uh, inclusion of some uh, definition of terms about uh, civil society because we think that formation of a strong civil society will facilitate the development of sustainable cities and uh, in includes uh, the following. Uh, under the provision of Nakaka Isampamayanan, adoption of all good provisions on civil society participation from the local government code strengthening of urban governance at the barangay level, recognition and mobilization of NGOs and other organizations, as well as provision of mobilization funds. Uh, I, we, we strongly believe that culture and cultural diversity uh, should be part of this uh, sustainable cities where we institutionalize all the, uh, the um, systems and practices uh, that that puts in bayanihan, malasaki, pagkawang gawa in the implementation of urban policies and programs and funding support for uh, the uh, for cultural heritage, as well as institutionalizing interfaith, interethnic, intercultural, and gender neutral systems and practices. The last part po, that we'd like to share is about planetary health, human health, and public health as framework for sustainable and livable cities and communities, which shall be concretized by the following provisions. Um, these are just definitions that we are proposing to be included. What it means to have, like what, what it means to have a healthy human being and uh, inclusion about uh, the definition of uh, planetary health, which refers to the health of human civilization, <coughs> excuse me, and the state of the natural systems on which it depends. Public health is the art and science of preventing disease also as uh, defined by the uh, WHO. Planetary health is actually a very new discipline. Um, much of the literature about planetary health only came out in the last four to five years. Traditionally, we look at health and medicine as systems within the human body, but planetary health is a form of health research that includes external systems that sustain um, or threaten human health. And uh, planetary health brings together a wide range of existing disciplines to ensure a healthy and sustainable future, which you can see in this slide. I'd like to show just examples of how planetary health research is helping shape how we should look at health in the future. On the left side, you see, how might urban planning affect rates of dementia? There's actually a research that, you, that has been published in the Lancet Journal that shows research links dementia risk to living near major roads. On the right side, we see uh, which weather um, conditions are linked to increases in cardiac admissions. 
A study shows, uh, the reference is below, that while drought is associated with reduced respiratory hospital admissions in the U.S. population, cardiac admissions are increased in periods of worsening drought. This, the next um, uh, just illustrations for planetary health is on how does our daily commute affect our health? Again, and the reference is stated here. A study shows that even though um, cyclists and uh, pedestrians are more at risk of inhaling pollutants, the positive effects of active commuting uh, outweigh the negative effects. Um, and uh, this is uh, a planetary health type of research. The last one is a decline in which animal population is linked to vitamin A deficiencies in humans. Uh, they found that decline in the B population could significantly increase deficiencies in vitamin A and folate. So the study highlights the importance of protecting pollination of the bees to protect human nutrition. So lastly, um, the section under provisions that we would like to propose uh, are, is of course adopting SDG3 on health, institutionalizing evidence-based multidisciplinary research in the implementation of planetary health and human health policies and programs, establishment of planetary planetary health research and development center for disaster and pandemic resilience and sustainable development uh, to significantly reduce uh, lives lost through disasters and pandemics. And of course, uplifting life, health and uh, e economics uh, through uh, livelihood programs and provide sustainable funding support and resources in the implementation of research and development on planetary health and human health for sustainable and livable cities, and deputizing academic and research institutions in multidisciplinary and translational research and development programs. That's all, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to present the University of the Philippines Manila position statement. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Dr. De La Paz. Uh, perhaps you could have a uh, suggestion coming from the chair. Perhaps you could have completed the, the loop by, uh, with you all due respect, adding the, the effects of uh, the pandemic on, on mental health. And, and surely this would uh, uh, impact uh, on, not just on the elderly, but even the youth. Because as we're, as we're locked down and cramped inside our homes, uh, mental health is, is, a, is a very big issue. Uh, for those who were not recognized yet uh, are the following. Uh, the League of Provinces of the Philippines, I uh, understand uh, you're around. Uh, I'm sure you're supportive of the bills. Uh, uh, Madam Sandra, uh, we've been working a lot since I was president of the League of Cities of the Philippines, as well as Dr. Uh, Ugadan of the University of the Philippines, uh, UP Diliman. Uh, we don't have much time uh, remaining, uh, but I, 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 I was told that you submitted your position papers. This committee will have, will have to conduct another hearing. Uh, perhaps two two more hearings uh, with the permission of uh, Senator Cayetano because we are now being called into a 2:30 caucus and I have to rush to that to that meeting. It is it has been very exhaustive. Uh, we we have tackled a lot, especially the twin measures uh, plus the Senate Bill 65, and and there is a way to fuse this all of these three. They're, they're not separate. Uh, housing is linked to sustainable development, even finance. Is linked to sustainable development. Even health is linked to uh, futures thinking that Senator Cayetano is, uh, has been espousing. So, uh, in in another setting, uh, within the next few days, we will uh, merge all of this and uh, taking taking cue from the suggestion of uh, Senator Cayetano. Perhaps there is a way that administrative uh, issuances can likewise be fused, not just in terms of lingo. Uh, integrating the word futures, sustainable, but in terms of administrative issuances and practice. And this is the way forward. Uh, we, we, can, we can have the Department of Finance, the Depart of, Department of Health, the Department of Housing, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Department of uh, Interior and Local Government, integrating not through, the, not through the administrative code, but through the regular issuances. 
and guidance to the general transacting public on how how to encapsulate all of this uh, new mindset thinking that Senator Cayetano has been uh, espousing. If there is no other urgent matter to discuss with the permission of Senator Cayetano, unless she has another item, I will have to rush to the other meeting because it's almost three o'clock. I'd like to thank you all. Uh, Sen Secretary Del Rosario, you're up for confirmation. I wish you good luck uh, within the next few weeks. I hope you, you're going to be confirmed. Uh, take a look at my suggestion on how to integrate uh, LGU initiatives with your department's initiative. Uh, uh, June Escalada, it's about time that we fuse all of our data together, that the figures uh, hand in hand with what uh, uh, Secretary Carl has been mentioning. The same is true with the finance sector, the ILG, and, uh, and Mayor, Mayor Bernard D. Uh, representing the, the LGU. So we, with the presence likewise of our, our resource person coming from, from England, I think this has been a very productive uh, hearing, though I have to admit that I have yet to take my lunch. Uh, Senator Cayetano, uh, you have a closing statement? Mr. Chair, I just want to thank you for um, bringing together all these resource persons in the hearing. I think both of us agree that the picture is getting clearer, you know, and the steps that we have to take. Uh, what we, you and I can do is limited uh, in terms of the crafting of the bill. Obviously, there's work to be done. But after that, like you said, all these administrative rules, you know, they have to come together. So I'm really grateful that we're having these discussions with a, a large number of uh, people from different sectors. And may we request that um, they continue to be allowed to be present to, to the extent that they have time or their representatives, because I feel like every day this is a learning process for us. So uh, let's welcome them, Mr. Chair, to continue to attend if their uh, time permits or at least a representative from their office. That's my suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, well taken. Uh, without any objection, this committee hearing of the Committee on Urban Planning, Housing and Resettlement, Committees on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking, Ways and Means, and Finance is suspended. Thank you.